So yeah, so I, I did. I was one of the creators of Coada, and I, you know, worked on, on that space for a long time. But I was very interested to uh, see how actually the rest of you know not, now that we have WebGL uh, and and graphics hardware uh, running inside a web browser, I was looking at the entire ecosystem and see how best we could uh, be using um, the three D technology with the technology has been developed for uh, for the web. And so I organized a meeting at GDC and um, I gathered a few friends and Tony and Henrik and, and, and a few others. And, uh, and we decided to see um, um, how we could use this other technology called REST uh, that's, uh, you know, it's pretty new, but it's uh, been used a lot um, and, and see if we can combine REST and 3D and see if it would be a better way of uh, getting data out of a server onto a browser. Um, onto uh, you know actually a 3D application that could be in a web browser or not, um, but that's really the idea of uh, um, leveraging the server and leveraging the um, the client um, in the right way. So, uh, in short, we've seen a lot of presentation of, of demos where um, the content had to be massaged and exported and optimized, and a lot of that is done kind of offline onto an exporter or uh, in, into a, a DCC tool. Um, so, and that's kind of uh, um, putting all the, um, that, that's, that's one way. The other way is to put all the parsing of the data into the JavaScript. And so there must be something in between where we can actually use a server to uh, provide uh, what is good at all that processing power that the server has and provide presenting the data to the client in a way that is useful um, to, uh, to the client. And that's what REST, um, APIs are about. Um, so let's see. We created this website, Restfield.org. It's a, a kind of a blog, and then uh, trying to put a spec there and um, and so forth. So I don't. I mean, we talked a lot about WebGL. So I'm not going to talk about WebGL. Um, Rest uh, uh, is it's uh, actually uh, I never remember what it is. It's representational state transfer and. What basically what it is is is, is an API uh, that the server responds responds to, and usually it's an HTTP or HTTPS, and you uh, have a URL that actually is, is used as if it was an API. Um, so everything that you send in that string is going to be interpreted by the server as an API. There are several many many use of that already. It's a part of AJAX. Uh, so it, basically, what it is is you have your application and it's running JavaScript and it's creating those URL strings and it's sending to the server and react to the user base on, on, on the different data that needs to be uh, de uh, deployed on, on the client. So you can look at those example uh, APIs, Twitter, Dropbox, Facebook, Google, you name it, uh, everybody has his, uh, everybody now, every server that provides some, um, some service has a REST-like API. Um, there are actually some um, definition of uh, this is a thesis and dissertation and some more work has been done to define what exactly is the REST full API. So we're not starting from, hey, it has a string so I can do whatever I want with, but there's some definitions and research that has been done on that subject. So first of all, the REST uh, full API is client server. Okay, so we talked about that already. It is stateless. So the server can have many, many clients connected to it. So um, whenever you make a request to a server, you have to send all the information necessary for the server to understand who is calling and what uh, what the context is and, and so forth. So don't expect the server to maintain the context for you. You have to send that uh, all the time. That's, that's actually how HTTP is built. If you uh, think about things like cookies, for example, they are sent in the header every time you make a request. It's not like they're magically uh, stored by the server. Um, then uh, it needs to be cacheable. And so cacheable is something I, I haven't heard today at all, but that's super important. If you actually want to uh, have a, uh, you know, a browser, uh, uh, to me, the 3D in the web is, is, is like, how can I discover data? How can I have a page that has 3D data and then I click on it, I say, well, I want to go inside, I want to, uh, you know, attaching a URL to a 3D object is really, the basic of that. Think, think about a, a scene, a 3D world that is an index.html page. And if you think in that index.html is a 3D object with a link to it, and then some JavaScript to manage that, that's how it should be if you really want to put uh, 3D in the web. And when you have that, um, the content that comes in from the server is big, right? We have big uh, 3D data. Uh, actually, the 3D data itself is not that big if you compare to the images and to the 
uh, animations, uh, for example. So it's very important that you can cache that locally and you can detect if anything has changed, if you need to load a new, a new version of that data. Um, and otherwise, uh, you know, reloading the entire world every time you need to do something, uh, it, it doesn't matter how much you compress it, it's not gonna work. Um, it's a layered system. Uh, that means that you can define an API and then uh, you can layer it into another API. So it's very, uh, the immediate aspect to it is that you want to be authorized to get access to the content. So um, because you need, maybe you need to buy it, you need to buy a subscription or, or, and so forth. So that uh, very interestingly REST uh, and HTTP is based on, is, is, can be managed in layers. So you can have the authorization layer that's a completely different layer of the API itself you get, you're get using to get your content and you can manage those that way. And code on demand, code on demand is very nice actually for, especially for 3D, because if you have an object, you can say, hey, I'm not interested by the 3D data of the object at all. I just want a viewer, right? If you have a video, you want a video player. If you want, if you have audio, you want an audio player. If you want a 3D model, you may want just a viewer of that 3D model. So that's where the server is very nice because you can create on the, on the fly the web, the, the JavaScript and WebGL code you need. And, and maybe the object itself will be embedded in the code, uh, you know, has been done in the past with OpenGL, but that's really uh, where servers can be uh, powerful. The server can make, just produce a piece of code that will draw an object uh, rather than sending you an object and you have to interpret it and parse it. Um, and the interface um, needs to be uniform. So um, the idea of uh, it, what it means is like you, 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 the, the, only the client knows what he wants to do with the data, right? And then it sends a, a new request to the server. So that's, this, this is key actually um, uh, in, to me. And that's one of the fun, fundamental things we did uh, when we created Colada, absolutely separate what the user wants to do with what the data is. If you make uh, assumption or if you embed with the data things that are specific to one client, then you miss the point because you don't you don't deliver content to the different client that wants to see the data. So I mean, for 3D, it, it, there's so many different users of 3D. There's not one 3D viewer. It doesn't exist. I mean, if you are an architect, uh, you may want to see the structural um, of the building. You may not interested at all by shaders. If you are doctoral, you may want to see the skeleton. If you are um, and, and in, even in the architectural field, for example, you may want to see what the shadowing was, what the lighting looks like when it's it's the evening. Or so there are so many different things you may want to look at. You look at the data in different ways that is very specific to the client. So it's very important to try to keep the server um, to send just the data you need and not um, think about how the client is going to use it. So. HTTP comes with uh, methods that um, everybody probably knows about, but there are four methods that are mainly used, get, post, put, and delete. And so what's interesting is to see how you can map those methods to what, what, it, what happens if you uh, send a URL and then say, I want to get that, or I want to post that. So obviously get means I'm going to get data. Post means I'm going to send you some data. And um, there is a one thing that has been defined in HTTP. It says that post, sorry, put and delete are in the impotent, which means that you can um, um, send the request um, one after another or several times and it does the same, it's the same result as, uh, there's no side effect to those, to those requests. And post, it could have a big side effect. It's not defined what the side effects of post are. So those are things that, you know, um, a little bit of research and, and trying to apply the, 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 those methods the right way. So if you look at REST APIs, you're going to see that, of course, you can do, actually you can do everything with a post or a get, um, and you can tweet, you know, you could send the whole data on the URL if you wanted, right? And so you could do a get and send the whole model on the URL and send it over the server. But that's absolutely not, you know, you should not do that because you should actually think about why those things have been designed and how they're going to be optimized for you and try to respect um, how those things are designed. So the, the REST 3D is very simple. It's like, you know, hey, I got a server and it's got some storage. And one thing of REST 3D is like the application should not care about storage, that, that all the storage is in the server. The application makes requests and gets its data. So very simple, you send requests and you get some response as a document. The client application can be a web browser or anything that can, you know, I mean, it doesn't need to be a, a, something running a web. It could, uh, a, on the web browser, it could be, 
you know, I don't know, Photoshop or whatever you want that just dialogue through HTTP instead of uh, just a file system. So it's like a like an, an extended file system where actually, I mean, the minimum web server and that's it, it, that we have now is doing nothing. Why? It's like you make a request and you get a file. And so there's no, the web server is not used at all. Uh, most of the time, what, what happened with all the demo we've seen so far is all the data has been pre-calculated, pre-optimized um, um, pre and stored on the drive. And so you're not really using any of the web technology. You're just storing that in an external server instead of a local server. So you can share it, but there's no, there's no real benefit of, of having um, a web server um, processing. So let's see, um, once you have, if you have an API that's used the same way by many servers, that would be nice because then you could uh, take the, uh, the URL of that server and then you can send the same REST API and then you can um, use those different servers for the same service. And so depending on the subscription or how many servers are gonna exist in the future, the same application that you can create now, let's say you, uh, you take, uh, uh, the middleware which I've seen, you add this REST API uh, calls to get to the server and then that servers uh, are gonna be, uh, both servers exist with the same API, then you can uh, browse more of the web uh, through that exact same API. Um, and then the, the beauty of the web is like, you can have multiple client accessing multiple server with the API. And so by doing that, you can have uh, multi users and, and, and so forth, okay? And comes, as soon as you respect, if you can design a REST API, you have all that for, for free, I would say, because that's, that's how the web, that's what the web provides. So, you know, here's an example of what uh, a REST 3D method could do based on what you want to get or put, you know, what, um, uh, what the, get, uh, the method is used for HTTP. So there are a couple of things you can consider. You can consider what is the size of the thing you're accessing. So it could be a whole collection, which is an equivalent of a directory of a, of a, or it could be a folder of a folder of a folder, you know, and the whole system, that's a collection in in uh, in web language. And so you can do things with that collection. You can add documents to a collection. The document could be a 3D model or could be a subset of a 3D model. Or you could actually also go deeper than that. And you can say, you know, in HTTP, there's a pound uh, sign that says, uh, hey, I want this, I want to need this subset of that uh, document. And so you can say, oh, I just, you know, it don't bother sending me the whole animation, just send me the geometry for now. Or, or by the way, or why not just send me the texture first before I, I load the model? So I'm not interested in the texture, just send me the model. So this see by, by providing an API where uh, the client can decide what to get, not just, you know, a set of file or a zip file or, 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 or a pre-compiled file with everything inside, it can actually discover, try to uh, browse the data and discover what it is that it wants. And then based on the application you're doing, uh, you provide a, w a much better interactivity between the user and, and the 3D data and actually um, implement what Ajax is um, nowadays for, for all the web applications we've seen so far. Uh, there, what, we, what we did in that group, we uh, looked at, you know, the, the interest behind creating such an API and, and we said, hey, there's good interest and we can see that. And we decided to start gathering uh, use cases. And that's where we are at right now, just gathering use cases before we can group the different features of the API into um, a specific uh, uh, type of, um, uh, of, of features and then, uh, and then create the, the API. Creating the API is not gonna be difficult actually. There's, there's a lot of technologies you can use to, to do it. So the design is, is the more interesting bit. Um, so right now, if you want to get content of from there are content repositories. Um, um, I'm looking at the Colada models, but it could be any format. Those are the different websites you can go to and search for models. Now, what you, what happens is like it's totally a human. It, it's not a program that can do that. You have to be a human. You have to click in there. You can search, and then what you get out of it is a zip file. You, most of the time, when you get your zip file or your or your form or your Felicity Max or your OVG, then you need to have a tool on your desktop to be able to open that file and then you have to take it and then re-export it in another format before you can even get it into a server that can then be accessed by WebGL. Right, so that's way too complex and requires a human in the loop. So the first thing is like, how can I make a, an API that took too many servers like, you know, Google Warehouse and then find out what those objects are, which one I want and then get all that data 
and and just through an API uh, be able to have a viewer of the object on my screen without having to do all this human in the loop costly time um, uh, intervention. Um, so you know you want to search. That's the first thing you know. And we it's funny where I Google, so we need to search 3D models. And so there's no there are interesting papers on how to search 3D models, but uh, if you look at the Google Warehouse page, the advanced search, you have all tons of different ways of searching for models. Um, and once you search the model, you want to browse inside that model. You want to know, hey, uh, is that model has the features I want? How many polygon it has? Uh, which tool is being made, for, uh, made with? Is it going to be what I want? Right now, you see, if you find, if you look for Eiffel Tower, you're going to find, you know, hundreds of those. And then if you really, uh, then if you want to know which one of those you uh, could use in your application, you have to download every one of them. You have to uh, take every one of them into a DCC tool and you have to analyze by hand every one of those. So that is not, you know, there's really something missing there. Um, so you can traverse one idea of Ajax is like, you know, you could be presented with a high level hierarchy of the object and you could be, uh, you know, clicking or by, uh, by program, uh, parsing the tree, like, uh, and then say, you know, oh, tell me a little bit more, about what's inside that, tell me a little bit more, about what's inside that, and so forth. And you don't have to load the entire world. And like, if you start with the entire earth, for example, and you want to, you can go at a very specific places and just download. Um, just get to the piece that you're interested in without having to download the entire model yourself, analyze it, and, and extract it on the client. The dependencies are, you know, 3D models require textures, require shaders. So why not having an API to tell me, you know, tell me what the textures are in that model? Uh, maybe I want to use them, maybe not. Maybe I want to use another server that can give me the textures in the uh, special format that I want to use. Maybe I want the, the shader in some other form that. Uh, or, so that's very important to be able to get that filtering. I kind of talked about that a little bit, and then download, which is you know finally give me the give me what I need. And so when you when you say uh, give me what I need, you actually could tell the server what format you want that in. Do you want it to be super optimized uh, for your application, or just hey, actually I want to I'm gonna use that into Max. So give me something I can use in Max and don't remove the metadata, don't optimize it. I want to modify that that object. You know, depending on what the use. Of the model, you may want to tell the server the different ways of, of the data should be transferred to you. Then uh, another use case is actually uh, kind of you know you can establish different use cases. In that in that in that case, uh, let's say we want to do a collaborating viewing of data, so you have multiple viewers and they actually um, maybe uh, able to create their own uh, their own scene. Um, which is, you know, I take, I take my, I start with a blank page, which is on the server, and I add models to that, and I create a scene, and I position those objects, and, and that scene is actually shareable with other people uh, using different clients that could be different even type of clients, so connecting to the same server, in that case, with the REST API, and then you can have collaboration of people sharing uh, a scene. So that's what we've seen with uh, virtual world and so forth, pretty much, uh, but that, what, what that, you know, if we have a standard way of doing that, now you could actually take models from one server to another server uh, and, and get the web to be a virtual world, not just this one particular branded server, of a specific uh, web ser um, server for um, virtual worlds. And then if you go, you know, why not, like I said, there's get and, and, and there's put. So you can actually use the REST API to store your content, uh, create content, store it, uh, versioning, make differences, and then you start to be into very uh, interesting way of using it. That's the wiki of 3D, right? That, that third use case is like, let's use the te web technology to make wiki of 3D. Um, so anyways, uh, what, what happened is like, like I said, we're collecting use cases. So there's a open group, uh, you just go there, you click, you put your name, you introduce yourself and you say, hey, this is, this is what I really would like to uh, to see happen uh, and have a server that provides me with that uh, those uh, those features. So if you have a use case, uh, very simple, you go join the, the group uh, and send us an email. Um, so I don't know how much time I have. Um, I have a few things I can talk about. Sure. Um, okay. I, it sort of depends on if we should take a few questions. We got a little pushed and, and I want to give you a little extra, but okay. I also want to sort of not steal so, people's lunch too far. Well, how about we go to a few questions?
what do you want to do? Um, give me one. Um, okay, if I, I can finish in one minute, okay, and then I can take a question. Then we'll take okay. a question, and maybe as you take the question, Vangelis, you want to try and start on the flip because I'm right. getting mighty afraid of this projector. So uh, I compressed the end of that presentation. Um, here's the typical XML model, and what you see there is like there's some uh, tags, and uh, you're going to uh, see that those arrows here point to where the bulk of the data is. You have those numbers in ASCII that are in that array, and those are the kind of the issues sending to the server. If you want to read that, what you do is you uh, you can use the the DOM uh, or embed that into the web page. The putting that in JSON is the same problem. You have this uh, the, those uh, uh, among us, um, uh, strings that need to uh, get into floating points, and so you can do that uh, easier because G uh, J JavaScript come with uh, uh, an evaluation, and so you can just send that there and let JavaScript do that for you. Um, but there is uh, uh, the new thing coming up, which is the type array, which maybe uh, there's a way to actually, uh, from the server, directly send those numbers as, as IEEE numbers. And so one thing the server could do is you can say, if you have type array or if you use a C++ program, you can say, well, don't send me that those strings. You know, Can you just send me directly the encoded uh, values? And, and so those are kind of ideas on how a, a, a REST um, API or server-based computation can help. Uh, with uh, the global performance uh, issues, okay? Um, yeah, so I, I put that, um, uh, I have a sandbox and we can play with that. Um, it's, it's some prototype implementation. Otherwise, there's the, the two links you, you want to uh, check out. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, let's go to a question and Vangelis, if you want to do the flip, we have a question over here. Hi. Hi. I guess my question is mostly, you talked a little bit about the importance of caching. I guess just how does the how does that all work together? Like if I was going to uh, get on an airplane, how would, how would, what would be kind of the best practices for dealing with that and using the, this REST API? Um, so if you, the REST, it depends on the client application and how it's using. So if you, um, I mean, Google has a way to, for example, get, uh, um, download everything you need before you take the plane and then use it. And so if you, if, if the REST API is actually respecting the standards that are in the HTML AJAX standards, then it would just work exactly the same way. Uh, caching um, in a web browser is very well defined by how, um, it's evolving all the time, but it's very well defined on how the server dialogue with the client with um, asking for uh, header information and returning, hey, this is the, the key, so if you have the same thing in your cache, don't download it again. Um, you can work, you know, like I said, the same exact technology, that's the, that's the benefit of using REST technology because the same exact technology that are used today on how to bring the world wide web with you on the plane would totally work with, with REST for the API. Uh, for, for the mashup scenarios, it's going to be important for the content repositories to be uh, serving up the content with the cross-origin resource sharing headers. Um, yeah, this Actually, the recent WebGL bug may be beneficial here, but do we have a sense of how many of the content stores uh, are actually serving up those headers? Um, it, it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it's uh, there's several ways of doing that. There's some hacks to do that. You can use jQuery to uh, go around that. And remember, it's a server-based thing, so the client can doesn't have to directly access 20 uh, different servers. You can access one server that does a request for you and send it back to you. So it's really a non-issue uh, of this. Uh, uh, I mean, you need to pay attention in the coding, but with with the defin definition of the REST 3D API, we can. Uh, get those two uh, to work together. Please give a hand for Remy.